Today I have a truck that had a complaint of loss of power and acceleration. And as you can see here, I have a plethora of fault codes um, for a range of things. And what I wanted to show you first is <clears throat> this here, the uh, count of how many times the codes um, occurred. You can see that it just rearranged the codes to have this one with 500 counts up top. And so uh, that's the code I'm going to go to first. If you have Cummins QuickServe, you can uh, use a tool they have in there to order these codes and it will tell you which one to diagnose first. Uh, if you'd like to know how to do that, um, comment and, and let me know and I'll make a video to show you how to use that tool. But today I'm going to start off with this VGT actuator code and we're going to see how to diagnose uh, that issue. So that VGT is your variable geometry turbo actuator. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to look at today. So this is a international truck with a Cummins engine in it. And your turbo is hidden back in there where this pipe goes. So I'm going to first remove this fairing and this air filter box uh, so we can access the turbo and the actuator. Now I have the uh, turbo broken down. I, I have the fairing removed and the uh, air intake uh, filter. And right here is your turbo and here is the turbo actuator which we're going to be removing and testing for its uh, proper operation. I just want to show you this is the uh, intake side where the turbo pushes air into the intake into the charge air cooler. You can see there is a uh, a lot of oil in there and here is the uh, intake pipe and there's a lot of oil in there. Now some people will say that uh, a little oil being passed by the turbo is normal, but in my experience, uh, that especially that amount of oil, there's probably something wrong with your turbo. It's probably has some blown seals, and this is probably gonna result in not only a bad actuator, but a bad turbo as well. So just be, uh, be on the lookout for that because I see that quite often on these ISB 6.7 Cummins engines. Just wanted to show you this as well. That's your charge air cooler. You can see this little puddle of oil right there. And as it goes in there, that could cause some problems with your, obviously with your charge air cooler's uh, effectiveness, cooling that air, getting gunked up by the turbo oil. So something to watch out for. Now, in order to remove this actuator, I'm gonna remove this plug, this electrical harness, which has a little lock clip here that I'm gonna pull out and then push down to unclip. And it has one coolant line running to it, which unfortunately means you're gonna have to drain your coolant at least, uh, at least a little bit to lower the level to pass this upper pipe. And then it's got four Allen key head bolts that hold it down, which as you can see, here's one here that's been getting, looks like coolant on it, gunked up. So one there, one on the other side, and then right here, past this cord, it's this one, and then one on the adjacent side back here. So just make sure you got the right Allen head key uh, socket and that you are careful with that one usually the new ones will come with replacement bolts but uh, just getting them out got to be careful okay so I have the coolant drained I removed the little pipe from there to there I took off my electrical harness this little pull back clip and then you push down on that and it unclips and then I have my four bolts holding 
this on. Right there, right there. Okay, that was a 3 16th uh, Allen key socket. Now you're just gonna break this loose because it's probably stuck on there a little bit by the gasket. All right, I'm just gonna pull straight up. Okay, so there's your turbo, and this is the actual turbo actuator here, and this should be freely moving from stop to stop. There's one stop, 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 stop. That actually feels pretty good. All right. And what you're looking for in here as well, is which I thought I was gonna see, but I don't, is you can remove this gasket. A lot of times the turbo will start passing oil through this compartment here. And the oil will get into your actuator and that will cause the actuator to malfunction and need to be replaced. But this, that's how this actuator works, is that these teeth are, it's a gear, and they lock into your turbo splines here, and as the actuator is commanded on or off by the ECM, those teeth grab the turbo actuator arm here, lever, and they open or close the turbo giving you more or less power with the command of the engine. So what we're gonna do to test this is that every time you key on the vehicle, this gear goes through a self-check swipe. So anytime you key on, that gear should move, should go through a full range of swipe of the turbo. So what I'm gonna do here in a second, I'm gonna have the camera set up on this gear, and I'm gonna go turn the key on once I plug the harness back in and we should see that gear move smoothly from one side to the other. If it doesn't move or if it doesn't move smoothly, we know that this is gonna be the problem. And with a fault code count, like the, the fault has happened 500 times, you can imagine that every time you key on the vehicle, it's trying to do its swipe and that's not working, so it's throwing that fault code. So that's probably what's been happening with this actuator that this actuator is going bad and every time you key on the vehicle it's throwing that fault count 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 and that's why it has so many counts so uh we will show how that works next okay so i have my actuator plugged in again okay that's all i'm doing though i'm just plugging in that connector i have this set up right here so you guys can watch this gear and see what it does. You're actually gonna know what it does before I do. Now you, when you key on, you might get a code for uh, a sensor that you have unplugged or for the coolant level being low, but that's all right. You got a hundred other codes as you saw. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna key the engine on. We're gonna watch for that, but I'm not gonna turn the engine over. I'm just keying on so it has electrical power. So here I go. I'm going to review this so I can see what happened and then I'll continue on. So as you saw, when I keyed on, you heard the brake check go with the clicking of the brakes and this thing did not move at all. Uh, so that is indicating to me that this is a bad actuator and I'm going to replace this actuator. And actually, I'm not going to do anything with the turbo. Um, because I've had this issue before with the turbo passing oil like that and Cummins themselves told, told me that uh, that's a normal uh, process. So unless we're seeing, you know, uh, fault codes resulting from that or, or loss of power in the turbo, other than the actuator, they're not gonna do anything about it. So I'm gonna replace this actuator 
and then I'll show you how to uh, calibrate and set that up, putting it back on the engine. Well, I'm going to have to go back together with the uh, old um, VGT actuator and the turbo. And I wanted to show you how to go back together with it because you need to calibrate the actuator prior to putting it onto the, the turbo and then you need to uh, adjust the turbo to make sure you have it in the right position. Normally the new actuator kits will come with a tool either like this or there's like a little diagram that you'll have to use. But for this tool, you have to align the turbo fins a certain way before you can calibrate it. So you want to start all the way to the left, the way I do it. You push this little pin in, then you start to drag to the right while applying pressure and you see how that pin just sunk into there. I'll do it one more time. All the way to the right, I'm pushing the pin down as I drag it all the way to the left. Pushing the pin down as I drag it to the right, you see the pin slides into place. So once I have that in that position, that's in the proper position for me to calibrate the VGT actuator and then put it on there. So I don't want to move this after you get it into that position. So next I'm just gonna replace my uh, gaskets on here. I had some extra ones from some kits I've had in the past. So I'm just using those extra gaskets since I'm going back on with the old one. You can see it's, the gaskets are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit, you gotta work with them to get them into place. But you can do it. Okay, and both gaskets. In place. Now before I mount this to the actual turbo, I have to do a calibration through Insight. So, I come to ECM Diagnostic Tests on Insight. And under an ECM Diagnostic Tests, I want to go to VGT Electronic Actuator Installation and Calibration. Next. Okay, it gives you a little disclaimer. Now, from this screen, I want to pull this drop down box and I want to do install actuator even though you're not installing it it's it's going to give you this warning caution this must be removed from the turbocharger before doing this so this is the step you do install while the actuator is off of the turbo so once you have the actuator off of the turbo and you're ready to do it, you just click start and it'll run. Here's our issue is that we know that this is a bad actuator, so this procedure is probably gonna fail. So let's see. Make sure, make it sure you have it removed from the turbo. See, if it was a good actuator, that, that gear would be turning uh, right now and as it's programming the actuator and getting it ready to be put on the actual turbo. It usually doesn't take this long. The reason that it's taking so long, I'm assuming, is because we got a bad actuator. See? But I know that this is bad. I know I'm putting a bad actuator on, so I'm just gonna install it. Anyways, I just wanted to show you the procedure. So now I'm gonna install this onto my turbo. And the new kits come with guide screws that you could screw into those bottom screw ports. And so that this will it'll guide your actuator onto the turbo nicely. But since I'm putting back on an old one, I don't have that, so. Try to do everything nice and gently so that uh, it's not out of place. Should 
We're right in there. Okay, just like so. Now I'm gonna put my four bolts in, there and there, connect my coolant line, and then I'm gonna run the next to see. All right, so once I have the actuator all installed and the coolant line back on and everything else, I come back to the computer and I go to drop down and I don't know if I can do it, touch screens. Calibrate actuator. Brings up this warning. Must be mounted before proceeding. It is. Again, this one's gonna fail because it's a bad actuator, but see it says that the installation of the actuator must be installed first because mine failed. It won't let me go onto this step. But in your case, if you replaced it, that's the process you'd go through and it would pass with a new actuator if you did everything correctly.